Welcome back everyone. I'm sure you'll be too as surprised with the next speaker as all of us were when we first interacted with her. So she is Tanya Elizabeth Kim. And the reason why you'll be surprised is not because of the topic, which is very pertinent to our theme, but because she's all but in her 12th standard. And yet she has made a mark for herself in the field of social entrepreneurship. Tanya developed an interest in technology early and decided to work towards contributing to UN sustainable development goals and is a strong believer that education can be the key driver towards achieving her goals. This led Tanya to develop an app designed to help children to actualize their dreams. This app was the finalist at the Technovation Channel in 2017. By the eighth grade, Tanya became the founder of Lakshashala Edutech. Lakshashala empowers children to reach their aspirations and believes that diversity and inclusion starts at the grassroots level. She became the student ambassador of Technovation in 2018 to 20 and is working with students from the underprivileged communities with the mission of equality in education. Tanya is also the young ambassador with Ariel Foundation, which actively participates and contributes towards achieving UN Sustainable Development Goals and promotes entrepreneurship via education and leadership worldwide. Talgra, the world's first talent showcase for the underdeserved, underserved communities, DNI Funnel, a structured system aimed at deploying diversity initiatives for any organization, and goal shadowing to help children actualize their dreams are some of her contributions towards fight against poverty. Super, which is Students United for Progressive Education and Reforms, and Good Cause Shop are two of her current unified component model initiatives towards contributing to a better world. Her nonprofit organization called Tulia is currently engaged with about 700 plus children. She mentored three teams of Technovation in 2019. Among 2,000 teams from 57 participating countries, two of her teams reached the semifinals and one qualified as the finalist and won the first place at the World Pitch on August 15, 2020. Tanya, hats off to you. And Thank over you so much. now for your presentation. Thank you. So good evening to everyone. I hope all of you are safe and are doing well. So before I begin, I'd like to thank the Project Management Institution in the Institute for inviting me for today's session on Project Management in Entrepreneurial Innovation. When I was asked what topic I'd like to talk about within the theme of today's session, in the blink of an eye, I said project management and innovation in social entrepreneurship. Lakshishala's journey, which happens to be my journey, has been about social impact. And I'm excited to share about the various innovations they've contributed in this space. The social entrepreneurship space and the nonprofit space is not known for innovation as much as the product and service space. But I hope that I can change this perception today as I share Lakshishala's journey. As I was thinking on the subject of project management and innovation in social entrepreneurship, I was reflecting on what value I can deliver to the members of the prestigious PMI community, most of whom are professional project managers. So I started digging deeper into project management, and I searched what makes a successful project manager. The top result to this query was an excellent communicator. Then I thought to myself, there are many good communicators. Will all of them be successful project managers? If there's a good communicator who's a successful project manager and a good communicator who's not as successful, what would the differentiating factor be? So I went further and searched for skills required by project managers. 
and the results showed 12 essential project management skills, starting with leadership, communication, scheduling, risk management, and so on. I looked at this list and thought to myself that some of these can be automated, and some of these, like cost management, can be taught. I was not convinced that just these skills can make a project successful. There had to be something more to it, right? So the next search was on hard skills in project management. It started with earn value assessment and critical path diagram, which honestly went above my head. So I had enough searching the web and started searching for answers within. As an eighth grade student who knew nothing about project management, and neither does the education system have a curriculum on the subject. But over the last few years, I've faced the mountain and valley of entrepreneurship. Yes, I've, I've had my share of success and failures. But when you get a school student to talk about project management, what you get will be the ground level understanding of what project management is. So the key takeaway at the end of the session should be what did a 14 year old girl without any formal education in project management do to execute her project? And the answer to this is the ground zero of project management. The ground on which every project should be built and executed. In 2017, while I was in eighth grade, I was interested in cybersecurity and ethical hacking. So I approached my parents for help. But since they were from a completely different domain, they did not know how to help me. And that is when I got this question. If the end goal of our education system is career, then what system does our education system provide to help me get there? Unfortunately, no such system exists. And then I thought, if this is a problem we are facing in the top schools, then what about children in the underserved community? What would they be going through? I was inspired to fix this. So I participated in the Technovation Girls Challenge with my app, Lakshishala. Our mission was that one day, irrespective of a child's culture, gender, financial, or family background, every child will be empowered to actualize their dreams. Out of 2,000 teams from 100 countries, we were selected to present our app at the Google headquarters in front of Sundar Pichay. But what made our journey to the world stage successful was not the founder's ability to present, but the judge's ability to perceive the purpose and the mission behind the project. So we won a seed fund and came back and registered Lakshishala as Lakshishala Edutech Private Limited with our mission, Equality in Education. So if someone asks us what we do, we say that we empower children to ensure that they get a career which will in turn help the family come out of poverty. And we use education technology to do this. And currently, we're serving over 700 families in three different locations. Our first module was an online learning system for the underserved community. Yes, what schools are doing right now during the lockdown, we started doing in 2017 for the underserved community through online facilitators. But then we found a gap. A gap between our mission and what we are doing. If we had to achieve equality in education, then just a teaching module will not be enough. Because the end goal is to help bring families out of poverty. And a teaching module cannot do this because there are many other hindrances. And we had to bridge the gap between our mission and the reality. So the first hindrance we found was that in the communities that we are working with, the parents are mostly uneducated and are daily wage workers. 
So the support system at home is almost zero. And we had to bridge this gap. So we came up with Batten. Last year, my organization decided to do something unique. From the three locations that we are engaged with, we selected three teams to participate in the Technovation Challenge I had mentioned about earlier. This was held in association with major companies like Google, Salesforce, Adobe, Oracle, and UN for Women. Out of 2,000 teams from 57 countries, two of our teams made it to the semifinals, and one team, consisting of two girls from Pade, which was a home for rehabilitation of destitute, went on to the finals and won the first place of $12,000, which they are now using for the STEM education. But what one of the judges said after the pitch is very important. He said that you took a very complex problem and presented a simple solution. Here again, the team may not have been the best communicators compared to the other teams, but the judges were able to perceive the purpose and mission behind the project and the impact that it can have for children in the underserved community by empowering social workers. Now that we had bridged the gap for this hindrance, we moved forward and noticed that a lot of talented children in the underserved community are going unnoticed by corporates. And hence, Telegram was born. Telegram is the world's first talent branding module for the underserved community. Think of Telegram as an Instagram for talent. We saw that there were many other hurdles in our way. For example, we noticed that many corporates talk about diversity and inclusion. But if you ask a recruiter if they have a tool to recruit talent from the underserved community, the answer is none. So we came up with the DNI funnel component. The DNI funnel connects talent from the underserved community to corporate recruiters. The next hurdle on our way was the fact that the parents could not mentor. If a child had an aspiration, they did not have anyone who could lead them. So goal sharing was conceptualized. Goal shadowing is a technology-driven, unique process of pairing two children with common career goals, wherein one child in the underserved community with support from the NGOs and social workers, goal shadows tasks by children in, who, are, who have parents who are privileged to lead. And in this way, both the children can achieve their common career goals through task mirroring. We continue to bridge the gap between our mission, which is equality in education, and the reality. So one by one, we started addressing these problems and came up with a unique model, which we call the Unified Component Model. As of today, we have 15 components which go hand in hand with each other to ensure that families can come out of poverty. And all these modules contribute to 11 out of 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Now, can we say that all these modules can be static? As in, can we say that we have all the confidence that are required to ensure that families can come out of poverty? No, we need to keep our offerings dynamic so that we can achieve our mission equality in education. To give you an example, today the pandemic has taken away the livelihood of daily wage workers. We are foreseeing an exodus of dropouts from children in the underserved community because the parents require the child to work because they need an extra helping hand to provide for the family. The need of the R is an alternate income generation channel because only a self-reliant family will prioritize the education of their child. So how do we make family self-reliant? So we narrowed it down to a women empowerment project with the end goal of zero hunger, which ensures daily income. So what the module does is, it ensures that women have an alternate income using limited space and they receive the income in a very short period of time. This future proves the communities during a pandemic-like disruption. 
By this time, we knew that painting schools, donating books, and giving laptops were good. But it does not contribute to the end purpose, which is bringing the families out of poverty. And you have noticed that all our modules and innovations revolve around one thing, the ground zero, the purpose, which is our mission, equality in education. As I conclude, let me leave you with my perception on what the ground zero of project management is. And I think many of you would have guessed what it is. The clue lies in the word bridging the gap. Did you notice the number of times I used the term bridge the gap? We were always working towards bridging the gap between our mission and reality. And whenever reality was stopping us, we came up with innovative and unique solutions to bridge the gap between the reality and our mission. So what started as a teaching module was followed by Telegram, was followed by Batten, which was, which was followed by the DNI funnel and self-reliant family. All derived out of one key need of project management, which is less spoken about, mission thinking. From a basic school project like a lemonade stand to a complex bridge project, the root cause of failure will point to the same basic problem, which is lack of purpose. And the purpose can come only from mission thinking, which I believe is the ground zero of project management. Reflect on what made Dabawala so successful, that management institutes like the Indian Institute of Management and American Ivy League schools came down to study how they managed their project. The Dabawalas were faced with different obstacles every day. They had to work through the uncertainties of the Mumbai traffic, and they had to carry dabas by foot, cart, and local train to ensure that the food is delivered to their customer. They conquered every obstacle to ensure that the mission of delivering food on time was actualized. And again, it all boils down to one thing, the purpose. They say that 80% of startups fail. But to prevent these 80% of startups from failing, or the secret in the pivot in entrepreneurship lies in the mission mindset. The secret in building a team is the same. Today, most of our technology, uh, most of our technology teams consist of pro bono consultants. And they all provide their expertise, not based on my request, but based on what they perceive can add value to our mission and can create a positive impact in the world. In the context of the topic project management and social entrepreneurship, I would like to give you a before and after scenario. Take Batten as an innovation, for example. Before Batten won the Technovation Challenge, social workers used to go to a community and do their social work intervention. After they complete their work, they used to go back to the college and submit a report. And after a few months, Another set of social workers would come and do the same work. And then the people in the community would ask, hey, a few months ago, a social worker came and asked the same questions and initiated a project. What happened to that? And that is when Team Social Relay presented the app Baton. Like a Baton in a relay race, which is handed over from one athlete to another, the system in Baton hands over the project from one social worker to another till the project reaches its meaningful end. The value for Baton was perceived by the community and the value for Baton was perceived by the judges. And last year, Baton was launched at the social work department of Stella Miles College. I hope you can visualize the before and after of the innovation, which was a result of mission thinking. The mission equality in education could not have been achieved by just teaching. We need to empower the community, including those who are working with them, like the social workers, so that the community development as a project is executed efficiently and effectively. 
So as a project manager, if I need to design a system for my client, the first and foremost priority will be understanding the client's mission mindset or the thinking. Not the mission which is written on paper or the mission which is framed on every wall of the office. It's about capturing the mission thinking that will help the team picturize the most happy customers, which are the end users. And once again, and once we can visualize, we will be able to remove every hindrance that will stop our client from achieving the end goal. And by doing so, they will have added immense value to the client through innovation. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. That was a fantastic session. Had this been an in-person session, I'm sure there would have been an standing ovation for you. Fabulous Thank session. you. Thank you so and much. We've got, we are getting such good feedback for the session already. Lots of questions. But the first question that we would want to ask is, what would you want uh, for, from us? We have a 1,000 people in the audience right now. How can we help? You can let us know that. Sure. So we believe that to achieve our mission, we need to collaborate because a problem like inequality cannot be solved by just one person or by one NGO. It's by collaborating with other people that such a big problem can be solved. So um, if anyone is the way how you can support us by enrolling for modules like goal shadowing, where you and your child can be part of the system and help mentor children in the underserved community. Or yeah, basically registering as mentors in our system itself would be very helpful for the children we are working with. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. The next question, which is coming from Chaitanya, says, what was your inspiration or trigger to do all this? Where do you draw your energy from? So um, as I mentioned um, when, um, when I was talking, I was interested in ethical hacking, and I saw that there's a major gap, uh, a major problem in our education system. And yeah, first we started with the teaching module. But when I actually went to the NGOs and saw the condition in which the government schools are and the problems that they are facing, that itself was inspiration for me to help fix the, pro uh, fix the problem which they are facing. Because the inequality is huge. Uh, if you look at the facilities which, children, which my school has, and you look at what the children in the underserved communities have access to, it's an extremely big difference. And it, it was just not fair. And I felt that I had to do something to help solve this problem. And that was a major inspiration for me, going directly and working with the children. Thank you. The next question is from Kali Charan, and he asks, how do you manage your time and have balance in your personal and entrepreneurial life? So we have uh, a team of 10. So whenever, I, um, whenever we work on a project, we usually split it amongst each other. So example, I ha if I have my school work or I, I have exams, um, the team handles it. And I just give them the basic understanding or the basic idea which I would like to do and uh, they would help me do the rest. So uh, it's thanks to the team and thanks to my parents too, because uh, without that support, I wouldn't have been able to do so much. Yeah, I'm sure without the support of your near ones, dear ones, it's not going to be possible. So true. Thanks. Yeah. The next question is from... A physical administrative structure for carrying out what you need to do? Uh, I'm sorry, the video got stuck. Can you please repeat the question? Sorry, I was saying the next question is from Jacob, and he asks, do you have a physical administrative structure of the people who are working on this initiative? Yeah, yeah, we do. So, uh, like I said, we collaborate with other NGOs, and in each of these NGOs and the government schools that we engage with, we have facilitators on site to ensure that uh, the technology is being used properly. Okay, thanks. The next question is from Jayant, and he says, how do you plan to make it a sustainable uh, venture in the long term, and how to spread in the wider geography? Yeah, so um, we mainly, uh, but first, initially, we were running mainly on CSR funding, 
But when this pandemic started, uh, the the sales of funding started reducing because um, yeah, the company started closing, and then NGOs started closing. So that became a big big problem for us. But then we came up with a module called a Good Cause Shop, which uh, which is more which leans more towards social entrepreneurship than a non-profit organization. So through Good Cause Shop, we are able to we were able to create a more balanced system where we can be self-reliant and at the same time um, get CSR funding. So in case the CSR funding reduces, we still have enough resources to manage our by ourselves. That's, that's interesting. Uh, this one last question I want to ask, sure. and it comes from uh, Vikas, and he asks, does this education, uh, luxury allow education work across the country, or do you have any specific places? As of today, we are just working uh, inside Tamil Nadu. So we have a center in Perengudi, a center in Trishulam, and we are working with the NGO uh, in Saligrama, which is uh, Pade, which I mentioned. So those are three locations, and we are looking forward towards expanding to other NGOs and other government schools across the country. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tanya. Um, Thank you for having me. There are so many questions, but we don't have time, so you have to just leave it at that and let them connect with you. But I have to say such wise words, uh, such inspiring work that you're doing, fantastic. Uh, we can only wonder what is next going to come up in the next coming years when you grow up. Um, yeah. if, the gener if the new generation in the future is in people capable hands like yours, it's going to be fantastic. On behalf of everybody at PMI Region 11 and uh, PMI West Bengal Chapter, we'd like to say fantastically thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity.